when brewing your coffee. So recently, Brent from Good Brothers Coffee just sent me this coffee and it is absolutely delicious. Now, the only problem I'm having, it might just be because uh, it's like a winter wonderland outside right now. It's getting, the air's getting drier, it's getting colder, and it's gonna change the way your beans quote unquote perform. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go over that. So this coffee was brewed or roasted October 28th. So it's about 17 days old. Not that old. I think that's about the perfect time to start brewing your espresso. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it without and I'm just gonna just grind up 18 grams and then we're gonna pull a shot. But I'm gonna show you how much coffee grinds actually stick to the cup. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called RDT. Now, if you're, if you're familiar with coffee, RDT is something that's been around for a while now, and it's actually been proven to work, and it's actually a really good technique to use when you do have static issues. Now, a lot of darker roasted coffee does have a little bit more static issues, so most people are getting used to just doing RDT on a regular basis. Now, over the lifespan of doing that with the grinder, just because of moisture and heat, uh, I don't know how well that performs inside with the burrs. I wouldn't do it all the time unless you come across this issue. So let's get to pulling a shot and we're gonna see kind of the issues that we're having here. All right, so first we're gonna start off. Just wanna say hi to everybody watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Gonna zoom in here. So this is the Soul Hand Grinder, or Soul Hand Grinder, Soul Hand Canister. I've been using this, this now for quite some time. Uh, this is what I use to store all of my beans. So I normally put them in this, probably about a week off roast. Uh, I don't like to put them in there any sooner, uh, but if I have to, I will. So now I'm gonna release it. For some reason, I just thought it was not sealed. I did it right before this video. So as you can see, beans are a little bit darker than I expected. These beans are actually really big too. So we're gonna show you the issue that I'm running across. Maybe a little bit oily. So we're just gonna dose out about 18 grams here. And there's 18. All right. And then we're just going to show you the static of this just like so. And I dropped a bean. All right, got to love live videos. I don't know what the grind size should be, but we're mainly focusing on the static issue. The static on this grinder isn't as bad as the niche. When I've been using the niche with this coffee, it's been really bad. Okay, so right now it actually is doing pretty well. Most of the time it hasn't been. But here is the static here. So as you can see, there's quite a bit that covers the actual, I don't really know, the chute, I guess, the coffee chute that you can say. Now the niche, I have all my dogs here, so when I move around and I can't move that much, it's because they're all right there. But the niche, the entire time, this whole entire thing, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've cleaned this since I've used this coffee, and it's extremely bad. So just wanted to keep that on there to show you guys for the sake of the video really quick here. But it's... uh. It could definitely be better. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our brush. So we're going to take our brush. And we're just going to get all that off for the sake of the video. I'll clean it up later. But that way we can kind of get an idea of how much RDT actually prevents all that static up there. So now we will pull our shot. So... We'll get everything all prepped. All right, here we go. 
So I am using the Lillette Bianca today. So I do want to give a big shout out to Joe from Espresso Outlet for uh, allowing me to review these products for you guys. Uh, I definitely could not do it without him. So a big thank you to him and all of the coffee community. So we're just going to WDT. I mean, I know it's not about WDT, but look how good that thing works. That WDT tool from Normcore works exceptionally well. So if you don't have one, I strongly recommend it. It's not needed. But like I said, it's just nice to have. No, I am not sponsored by Normcore. I just enjoy using their products as well. It's the same with St. Anthony. And we will go ahead and give it a nice tamp. All right, stick the puck screen on. And let's brew some espresso. And we'll time it so that way at least we're not wasting coffee. We can make it more drinkable if it needs to be. But we're not using the bottom list, so you guys should be able to see it pretty well here. Pretty well. There we go. And here we go. Timer's on here, so I don't need to time it. You guys can see the time there and how fast it comes out. So it's way too fine. So we're going to cut it back here. Oh, yeah. There it goes now. Definitely too fine, but it's okay. Really fine. We're at 32 seconds and we have four grams out. And we're still at nine bars. Let's drop that a little bit. Get to nine bars of pressure. Yeah, this is going to be an absolutely miserable tasting drink. But we're going to go ahead and run it all the way to 30 grams. Kind of so I can get an idea of where it needs to be grind size wise. All right, so that was 65 seconds. That's a lot. That's going to be an absolutely disgusting shot. So, I don't even think I want to try that. I mean, I'm going to try it because I tell everybody to try their drinks. Could be the best shot of espresso you've ever had in my life, but cheers. Let's try it out. Absolutely awful. Would not recommend that. So, that was 65 seconds. So... We are currently right now at grind size 15. So I'd say every, every click, or not click, it's a stepless grinder, but every extra dial on here that you go, it's about six seconds off. So if we're about 65 seconds, we probably need to be at about 22. We'll go 22 and what I like to do is whenever I adjust the grind you actually should do it before just kind of get the rest of it off and then we'll take that down all right so now we'll go ahead and dose out another dose here that's absolutely miserable. I would, ugh. I don't think I've had a worse tasting shot than that one. And it's not even just about the time. I've had 40 second, 50 second shots that actually tasted pretty decent. I wouldn't recommend trying to shoot for that every time, but sometimes it surprises you. All right, it's important to keep everything the same. And here we go, we got this. And then we're gonna take a look Actually, I'll dump this in here 
and I'll give you a close up so you guys can see the static. Actually, let's dial it in first. We'll do we'll do three shots because then we're gonna do some RDT after. So right now the static isn't actually that bad. All right. So here is the stat. I mean, there is a decent amount of static. You see it in the cup too, how it sticks to the side there. That's all static. I mean, you can tap it to the ground like that, and then you see it's still on the machine. So just for testing purposes, I guess we'll pull another one just so obviously you guys could see it happen after it was completely clean. It wasn't completely clean the first time, but you saw how much static there still was. And now let me prep for the next shot here. Just clean your porter filter. It's always good to flush your group head. You don't want all those coffee grinds to get all in there and make it really nasty. The only bad thing about using a spouted is it just leaks and they're just very messy. All right. Take this puck off. That was a nicely uh, compacted puck. All right. And we are going to prep the next one. Workstation's kind of dirty right now. All right, so we'll use the same steps here. Now this you don't want to go too fast because you'll actually create a ring around the basket and that's actually not a good thing. And tamp. And then we'll set that puck screen right back in there. So let's see where this shot comes in at. And we'll see. Building up pressure, a lot better. Could even go a little finer because we're not even at top pressure yet. Twenty four seconds, definitely a lot better shot than the first one. And I'm sure it's going to taste a lot better as well. So we're actually going to go. Let's see, that one came out maybe a little bit finer. So it'll be at about a 21. I think that'll actually give us the perfect shot that we need here. So we'll go ahead and try this one. Cheers. Yeah, that's a lot smoother. Uh, crema is actually present in this one. This one was kind of faded from the beginning. There wasn't really much crema there. Get everything cleaned up. And then we will do RDT so we can see if it does help the static issues on the actual grind. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate all of you, the love and support you guys have all shown. Coffee community has definitely been um, very, very supportive over the last two and a half years that I've been on YouTube. And I couldn't thank you enough. Wow, look at that puck. Let's admire this puck. Look at that thing. I just broke it there, but look how nice that thing is. 
It almost, I almost just want to have people over and be like, hey, you guys want a brownie? <laughs> and then they try it and then they don't like me because it does not taste like a brownie. All right, here we go. Now we're going to do the same thing, 18 grams, and then we're going to do a little bit of RDT. And we're going to see if it does help the static in the cup and also on the shoot of the grinder. So I want to thank Brent from Good Brothers for sending me this coffee to be able to make content for you guys. Get our spray bottle here. And all you need is one squirt. So I'll show you guys up close. It's literally just one squirt. See that? Gets just enough moisture on the bean. It's actually a really good squirt. So now what I do is I just take it like this and just shake it. Just mix all that moisture in with the bean itself. Now you can do this anyway. You can dip a stir stick in water and then just put it in there. Or you can squirt it like this. I just make sure it's nicely mixed. I mean, you can see all the coffee grounds in my hand. But now there's some moisture to the bean. It's not going to be as dry. And you're going to just get a better non-static dose. Just make sure that when you do do that, there are sometimes beans that get stuck just because it's wet. Just make sure it all goes out. And here we go. So there's no static there. And let's see. See how there's really not any coffee grinds going on the side of the cup? No coffee on here. And then I'll do the same thing with the bellows. So just take a look at that. See how there's like really nothing on that chute anymore right here? It's all nice and clean. And remember last time when I did this, there was a crap ton of coffee on the side and I had to knock it down. Well, you don't really want to do that because it actually can make a difference when uh, actually pulling your shot. But RDT works. I just don't know if I'd recommend it every time. Uh, only because, I, I, like I said, with the burrs inside, I don't know if they would rust. I mean, that might be far-fetched. But moisture and heat technically don't go well together. But when it comes to being um, dry in here uh, obviously it's getting colder it's gonna mess with the beans so you're gonna want to maybe do a little bit of rdt here and there so this one actually might be a perfect shot dialed in so there is that and we'll keep the same tools I always wipe this side off. I don't like to have any coffee grinds because when you lock it into your porta filter, if you lock it in with grinds and stuff, then it's going to get all in your seal. And why waste a seal uh, when you can use it a little bit longer? All right. And here we go. Third and final shot here. Go ahead and lock that in and we'll get another cup. This one should be a lot better. And here we go. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Good pressure. Shot actually came out faster when doing RDT. So we got 37.9 grams in 19 seconds. So 
Obviously, there's another variable in, in, in with all of the, the process. So when you do do RDT, that might be another video that we're gonna kind of get to the bottom of. But when you do RDT, it actually made the shot come out faster. We dosed the exact same, we did the exact same with the exact same tools, and shot just came out quicker. But that's obviously because you're now adding another variable, you're adding moisture, um, which the bean, obviously with static, it just means there's really no moisture in the bean. So, cheers. Now, I, I do find it, um, I do find that RDT does work very, very well especially if you're tired of cleaning up a mess from grinding your coffee. I mean, my niche was covered in grinds every single time I did a shot. Uh, I just actually had my family over here. Uh, my dad visited from Florida and I made everybody coffee and my grinder was absolutely caked in coffee grinds. So definitely would recommend RDT when that happens just because it's easy for cleanup, but make sure you do adjust. Uh, you go a little bit finer as, uh, as opposed to when, because you saw I was on 21 and it was, it was 22 and it was choked a little bit. And then we went to 21 and it was really fast. So RDT does mess with that. I do want to show you guys this winter wonderland outside really quick. Talking about moisture. We got some snow falling here. It's very beautiful. I mean, you can barely see it, but yeah. What do you guys feel about that? Huh? We just bought this big refrigerator for the coffee cart. Uh, the coffee trailer is, is about to get underway with remodel. We are extremely um, ecstatic about getting that coffee cart going and being able to be mobile and serving out of the actual trailer um winter fun yes absolutely winter fun uh big shout out to linda i see she's joining uh joe from espresso outlet uh drink land so i just want to give a huge shout out to all of you who are tuned in uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and i hope that this video helped uh, especially if you're worried about um, always cleaning up your grinders because of a disaster from static. Static is definitely not a good thing. You just have to make sure that you adjust on uh, grind size, obviously, as you saw there. Uh, so just make sure to go finer when you do RDT. So hopefully with that being said, you guys learned something from the video. I hope you guys try RDT at home. If you're already doing RDT, what do you think about overall um, the lifespan of the burrs inside if you do RDT every time as part of your regular workflow for coffee. Let me know what you think would happen in the burrs. Do you think they would rust or I mean, what do you think would happen? Do you think anything would? Uh, let me know. I'm curious what you guys think. And also, I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday morning. And I will catch you guys in the next one. As always, stay caffeinated. Peace.